My sister was born during, during the bombing, during the war. And when the bombing was at its worst, Dad would take us to the air raid shelter, which was built into a, a mountain. Having my sister in a rucksack on his back, she would, I remember, she would have the little cord around her neck and her little head would poke out. It was really quite cute. And then in 1945, the war ended and I was totally gobsmacked that we actually got undressed to go to bed because I wasn't used to it. I'd forgotten that this is what you do. Most of the bombing was at night and we would just lie down in bed fully dressed and just take off our shoes. Actually, the early tanks with the Soviet army arrived and uh, my dad knew that as soon as they found out that, you know, he was from an aristocratic family, he would have either been shot on the spot or sent to Siberia. So um, my father made the decision for us to flee uh, to the American sector of Germany. And ours was one of the last trains to get out. And we were in, um, in um, wagons with, with sliding doors, cattle trucks, I guess you call them, um, with just sliding doors on one side. And um, the train seemed to travel forever. Um, there were no facilities, of course, no toilets or bathrooms or anything. It was a bit like Dr. Zhivago, except the conditions weren't so harsh. Um, and I remember a very traumatic thing happening to me, um, which I remember to this day. And that is that by this time, 45, I would have been about eight years old. And of course, you're pretty modest at this age and uh, when the train stopped people would jump down and relieve themselves by the tracks but I decided to climb under the train to the other side where I wouldn't be seen because there were no no windows or doors in the, on the train carriages and while I was there the train started to move and I I was so terrified of being left behind that I climbed under the moving train. I must have instinctively, because certainly wouldn't have thought of it, but I must have instinctively started climbing under the train sort of immediately after one set of wheels. And it wasn't going very fast, obviously. Um, and climbed to the other side and mum was in the doorway and she was about to throw herself out and they pulled me in, but it stayed with me forever, this abandonment feeling, very scary. Now I remember my mother saying to me, looking at me and saying, you have two birthmarks. I've got a small birthmark on my one shoulder, can't even remember, left or right, and a very tiny one on the bottom of one of my toes. And mum said, I will find you if we ever lose you, however long it takes, I will find you and I will know you. <laughs>